So the American Heart Association is caving in on low carbohydrate diets. The American Diabetes Association is already recommending a low carb diet deep, deep in their guidelines on page 192 or something. But now the American Heart Association has just issued a brand new scientific statement about the comprehensive management of cardiovascular risk factors for adults with type two diabetes very important population, very at-risk population. This is a scientific statement from the American Heart Association. Now, if you've heard me talk much about the American Heart Association, you know that I think that both them and the American Diabetes Association should hold a joint press conference and announce to the world that they were completely and totally wrong about the high carbohydrate, highly processed diet full of grains and fruit juices and fruit juice smoothies and cakes and cookies and pies that they've been recommending to diabetics, both type one and type two for the last 50 years. My good friends, Dr. Eric Westman and Dr. Jason Fung, both of whom are slightly less um, inflammatory as me, said, well, they're never gonna have a press conference. What they're gonna do is they're gonna slowly start including low carbohydrate recommendations into their guidelines very quietly, very subtly. And then 10 years from now, they're gonna have a press conference and say, well, we've known that low carb was the best way for diabetics to go. We've known that for a decade. That's, that's old news. We invented that. And indeed, it looks like that's what they're doing. Let's dig into this scientific statement from the AHA. So under the nutrition section of this scientific statement, they piggyback on the ADA's recommendations to support various healthy dietary approaches to achieve glycemic control and weight management. Although the effects of dietary interventions on CVD outcomes in individuals with type two diabetes has not been widely studied, and this is true, and it needs to be studied immediately. The Mediterranean diet, the Paleolithic diet, the low carbohydrate diet, high protein diet, vegetarian and nut enriched diets have demonstrated benefits on glycemic control and weight loss in type two diabetes with the Mediterranean diet producing the greatest improvements in glycemic con control in studies so far because it's the most studied diet. It's the one they're currently in love with. I I'm not sure what a nut enriched diet is. Does anyone know what that is? Next, they say very low carbohydrate versus moderate carbohydrate diets yield a greater decrease in hemoglobin A1C. Wonder why they didn't compare the very low carbohydrate diet with the very high carbohydrate diet that they've been recommending for the last few decades. That's weird, isn't it? Very low carbohydrate diets lead to more weight loss and use of fewer diabetic medications in individuals with diabetes. Hmm. For those who are unable to adhere to a calorie restricted diet, which means a semi-starvation diet for the rest of your life, most humans aren't able to starve themselves for their entirety of their life. And so they're saying instead of calorie restricting for the rest of your life, then do a low carb diet and you'll reduce your A1C and your triglycerides. Holy moly. So a low carb diet will reduce triglycerides as well Thus saith the AHA. They also admitted that very low carbohydrate diets, you notice how they avoided using the K word there. Uh, very low carbohydrate diets were effective in reducing A1C over shorter time periods, less than six months. Absolutely right. In a three month time of a ketogenic diet, you can reduce your hemoglobin A1C as a diabetic, either type one or type two, far more than any pharmaceutical on the pharmacy shelf. There is no drug on the market that will lower your hemoglobin A1C faster than a very low carbohydrate diet. That's the K word, keto. The AHA goes on to say modest weight loss, which you're gonna get with a ketogenic diet, increased physical activity, which you'll actually feel like doing after a few months on a ketogenic diet, reduction of sugar sweetened beverages, processed carbohydrates, and reduction in alcohol use can lead to significant serum triglyceride reduction. But now, hold on a minute. 
Didn't the American Heart Association used to put their little check of approval, their seal of approval on Raisin Bran, on Cocoa Puffs, on Lucky Charms, on French Toast Crust? Uh, yeah, they did. And they made thousands and thousands of dollars for doing that. But the, the low carb ketogenic carnivore community has put so much social pressure on the American Heart Association, put so much uh, embarrassment on them that they have stepped away from making the probably hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, putting their little check of approval on Raisin Bran and Cocoa Puffs, Lucky Charms, French Toast Crust. They've stopped doing that. They don't do that anymore. They We, we basically call them out on it and they stopped doing it. I hope they're thoroughly embarrassed by ever doing it. I hope somebody got fired at the AHA for ever thinking that was a good idea. But now they say to reduce those processed carbohydrates, that'll actually lower your serum triglyceride. Then they go on to say that, that occult hypothyroidism should be ruled out. Every doctor in the country, please pay attention to this, you miss occult hypothyroidism, low thyroid, you miss it all the time because you only check a TSH. You don't check a full thyroid panel. So every mid-level provider, every doctor, every patient listening to this, if you have type two diabetes and low thyroid symptoms, insist that your doctor check a full thyroid panel, not just a TSH, or you will very often miss occult hypothyroidism. So occult hypothyroidism and nephrosis should be excluded. 100% agree with this. And adjustment, pay careful attention to this, adjustment of medications that raise triglycerides. Wait, there are medications that doctors prescribe you that can raise your triglycerides that increase your risk of having a heart attack? Uh-huh. Beta blockers, thiazide diuretics, and others should be considered. What they should have said is they should, they should be discontinued and either another medication prescribed in its place that does not raise your triglycerides and raise your blood sugar and lower your testosterone, but they said it should be considered. I think that's a great improvement for the AHA considering how they used to ignore all these topics completely. Then in the work cited, they actually cite eight different studies that show the benefit of a low carbohydrate or a ketogenic diet. Now I've linked to this entire scientific statement in the show notes below. And uh, at the very end, starting with citation 59 through 65A, those are the citations that reference low carb or ketogenic studies. So what can you do with this information? The very next time you see a cardiologist, a cardiothoracic surgeon, an electrophysiologist or a mid-level provider that works for one of these guys, and they say, oh no, don't do keto, it'll kill you. Don't do low carb, it's bad for you. You can say, hey, dummy, the American Heart Association in their latest scientific statement said that that is a viable alternative. I actually took the liberty of printing out this scientific statement for you and bringing it to this office visit today because obviously you have not read it. So all you cardiologists out there, get ready for the low carb ketogenic wave because if you say keto will kill you or low carb is dangerous, they're gonna wave this scientific statement in your face and say, do you not keep up with your reading, doctor? Please share this video with every cardiologist you know and with everyone who suffers from prediabetes, type two diabetes, or even type one diabetes because these principles and all the principles I talk about in my other YouTube videos apply to them and will improve their health and will help them use less diabetic med medication and will decrease their risk of having a heart attack or a stroke. The race is on, guys. This is it. The American Heart Association is backing away from their previous statements that keto is dangerous and low carb is dangerous. They are starting to embrace these. It's time for us to hold their feet to the fire and say, hey, wait a minute. I thought keto would kill you.